seat you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God. And that's about as far as I got, David. It was due next Tuesday. Doc tried to help me memorize this, but hey, it just wasn't going in. Well, next Tuesday, I knew I didn't have that memorized, and it was going to be bad. And we got wind that there was a cobra up there at Bristol, like yours, David. And I, I think I was driving. Dad let me drive a car. It's Tuesday again. And I want to go see that cobra so bad I can't stand it. And I know I don't have that scripture memorized, so here we get in the car and we go to Bristol and we look at that cobra all morning long. That's about lunchtime. And we come back to Bluntville. I don't know why we come back to Bluntville, but we come back to Bluntville. There used to be a little old restaurant out there. I can't remember the name of it. That's a joke. That's a joke. Yeah. Well, we went in that little old restaurant. And we would get orders of hamburger and everything was good. Thought we'd got away with everything. And I looked out the window and there the band teacher was coming. I can't remember his name either. But he was looking in the window at me. And I said, quick, we're going to the bathroom. Bathroom was downstairs. So here we run as hard as we could, got down them steps and went in the girls' bathroom. <laughs> and here he comes running down them steps. He 
goes in the boys' bathroom looking for us. Well, the window was open in the boys' bathroom, and he figured we'd scoot it out the window. I said, we got by with it. We got by. No, no, we didn't get by with it. Next morning, the PA was Steve Kennard, Stuart Kennard, and Chris Wilders come to the office. Well, like I said, old Blake tried to do good by me. I went in, he said, have you got that 12th chapter of Romans memorized? I said, no, sir. He said, three days, yeah, out of here, three days. He looked over at Chris and he said, have you got yours memorized? He said, no, sir. Three days, you're out of here. Now, my brother didn't get caught the other time. He got by with it somehow. So he looked up and my brother said, I guess I'm going to give you the 12th chapter of Romans to memorize. He said, no. He said, I'm going to them. <laughs> He got mad. Dave, he got so mad he couldn't see straight. He said, who's running this show up here anyway? He, my brother said, don't you know? He is. <laughs> this is to say that wasn't good. We all three got kicked out. Your sins will find you out. They yeah. will. So what fruit was produced then from the things you are now ashamed of? For the end of those things is death. But now since you have been liberated from sin and have become slave to God, you have your fruit, which results in sanctification, and the end is eternal life. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life Amen. in Christ Jesus our Lord. Yes. Okay. I'm going to read this first part right here. What is sin? Sin is actions by which humans rebel against God, miss God's purpose for their lives, or surrender to the power of evil. The first thing that sin is, is you don't obey what God's Word says. You know that part there that says, do unto others as you would have them do unto you? We don't want to do that. And when we don't do that, that is sin. When we decide purpose in our heart, we're not going to treat anybody else like we want to be treated and we just do it our way. That is sin. We get into them thou shalt not. Over in the book of Exodus. Thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not lie. Bear false witness. Thou shalt honor thy father and mother. We don't do them real good sometimes, do we? Thou, thou shalt not commit adultery. We don't want to do that neither. But the one we really mess up on, it said to love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and have no other gods before him. Yes. When we set up little things, Miriam, that's more important to you than God, they become your God. Yes. It can be a TV program, be something you own. It becomes your God to you. Transgression against God's word is sin. Don't obey the Holy Spirit. I've I, I dealt with that in a bunch too myself. I found out that I needed to listen to the Holy Spirit when he spoke to me. I need to perk my ears up and listen. If he says, put $20 in that offering plate for that woman over there they're taking that money, well, you better put that $20 Amen. in or you'll lose it before you get on. Yes. It's sin. Rebellion against God. Unbelief is resistant to the truth of God. Man, if you turn one more page, sweetie. Missing the mark. The blues, the Hebrew word for that is chatter. What that means is that you take a bow and arrow and you've got a target and you draw back and you let that arrow fly and it goes off to the left or the right. You miss your purpose. That's sin. Lacking fellowship with God. Anything that inter interferes, hinders your fellowship with God is sin. To know to do good and not do it is sin. There's a lot of sins out there. But there's a penalty for sin. There's a wage for sin. 
And I'm going to talk about four examples right here of what sin does to you. First one's Adam and Eve. They're in the garden. Everything is perfect. Everything is good. God comes down and walks with them. God said, of all the fruit of the trees in the garden you can have, except the tree is in the middle of the garden, you can't eat it. God said, the devil said, no, you'll just be enlightened and you'll understand everything. So Eve listened to Satan. She listened to the devil. She partook of the fruit of the tree in the middle of the garden. The God had said, the day that you do this, you're going to die. But Satan said, no, it's a lie. You'll be as smart as God. Adam jumped in there and helped himself too. God comes and it kicks them out of the garden and death and sin comes into this world. There wasn't no death before. There wasn't no sin. It was a perfect place. But sin come in. Sin always brings death. It started out two children, Abel and Cain. Cain slew Abel. Death come upon the land. That's how death got into the world. Because of sin. Achan, he was a soldier in the Israeli army when they were over going to take the city of Jericho. God said, when you go into Jericho, do not touch anything in that city that belongs to me. Do not take anything out of that city. Achan walked through the city. They won a great victory. The walls tumbled down. And he's walking through and he says, oh, there's two Babylonian garments. I'm going to take them. There's two bars of gold. I'm going to take that. Oh, there's some coins. I'm going to take that too. And he hid it. You can't hide sin, guys. It'll mm -hmm. find you out. So Aiken's feeling that, like me that he got by with it. The next day when they go out to fight a battle, they lose. They pray, and God said, there's sin in the camp. Now, sin don't only affect you, the individual. Sin affects your family and your friends. Yes. They cast lots, and they determined that Achan was the guilty man, and he confessed his sin. They took Achan, his wife, and his children outside of the camp. And they stoned him to death. See, Achan's sin caused his children to perish and his wife. And they then set their bodies on fire. They didn't even want to have anything to do with sin. And can you imagine that stench coming up a burning flesh? David, you know what it smells like. Dave, you may know. It don't smell good. But that flesh was burning. And every one of them Israelites smelt that smell of death. You see, the wages of sin always brings death. Harry, King Harry. King Harry is the one that had John the Baptist beheaded. <clears throat> Harry is the one that when Jesus was on trial in Pilate's Hall, they sent him over there because he, he was over Galilee. And Herod mocked him, put the purple robe on him, the crown of thorns on him. He was a bad guy. The Bible says one day that as he was going through the city, riding upon his animal, that the people said, he speaks as a god, he's like a god. And he said, that's me. The Bible says that worms consumed him where he was at. Sin, when you take away from the glory of God, that sin, sin will always destroy you. Judas walked with Jesus for three, over three years, every day, seeing the miracles, seeing them all, right? But he betrayed him for 30 pieces of silver. That's sin. That's sin. 
He came back later, David, not repenting, but sorry. He said, I have betrayed innocent blood. They wouldn't take the money back. They wouldn't release Jesus. So he goes out, puts a rope around his neck, hangs himself. Sin always brings death. It always does. Sin can be in sin in all walks of life. God miraculously spared Noah, his wife, his sons, and his daughter-in-laws. He seen the hand of God move. The world was destroyed. And what does he do when he gets on land? When he gets out of the ark, gets into safety? He goes, gets drunk. Yeah. Sin. It's terrible. Sin. Sin caused a man chosen of God to go to sleep in a woman's lap with his head laying on her lap. She cut his hair off and he got blinded. Samson. Sin will cause you to do terrible things. Sin will cause you to do the most vile things you can imagine. Can you imagine being in the city of Sodom and all the sin that's in this city and the angel of God comes down and says, Lot, God's going to destroy the city. Get out of the city. So him and his two daughters and his wife leave the city. And God said, don't look back. But what does she do? She turns around and looks back and turned into a pillow of salt. Yeah. But let me tell you, Miriam, one of the awfulest things that ever happened in this story. Lot and his two daughters are living in a little cave outside of the city. They get him drunk. He gets involved with incest with his daughters. All of this leads to death. It's a terrible thing. Sin's a killer. Fills the cemeteries. Battlefields with body touches every house, palace, or a shack. Go on, sweet Jim here. <clears throat> Sin has the power to corrupt. It causes you to be unfaithful to God. And if I listen to sin, if I listen to the lure of it, it will cause me to be unfaithful to God. Sin. It changes homes into hell. I had a, an acquaintance. He was a deacon in a church. On the surface, pretty good guy. Well, him and his wife didn't have children. So they went out and adopted three of the prettiest little boys you've ever seen, David. And everything was going good in their life. So they hired this new girl at work. And he was smitten by this new girl at work. He forgot about them three kids and his wife. He just first wanted to talk to her. You know, I'll just speak to her. Next thing, he was wanting to spend a lot of time with her. Next thing, he was wanting to Pit on her a little bit. And the next thing you know, he's in full-blown adultery with this girl. Loses his home. Loses his family. Everything and dies. Sin brings death. It always does. Defiles the mind. I had this other girl in church. She's about, what, 24, 25, I guess. She's the best worker I had in church today. I have to honestly say, the best worker I had in church. She'd help us do anything we needed done. She'd be there. She, on our, our dinners, she'd bring a lot of food in. She's always working. She had a problem. She didn't like to watch soap operas. And she got so engrossed in those soap operas, David, that she started living them out. When she'd see these people on, on TV do these things, she'd want to do them. And I talked to her. She said, I do all right, I'll watch that, and then, then I want to go do it. Well, I said, quit watching it. But she wouldn't. 
She wouldn't quit watching him. Divorce? Divorce? I don't know where she's at now. It causes all kinds of trouble. And I don't mean to step on toes, but I'll probably step on toes this morning. Secular music. We have a love affair with either country music, rock music, or rap music, or hip hop, whatever you want to call it. And, and, and we don't realize what we're putting in us. We don't realize, hey, there's not a person in this, in this building I don't think would let somebody come in your house and commit adultery, would you? You wouldn't do that. But what are you doing? What are you putting in your head when all them country songs are talking about is adultery and getting drunk? Yes. Is that godly? No. It leads to sin. Rock music, drugs, rebellion, all kinds of bad things. Suicide. Them, what is it, goth music, I guess, friend? The one with the all in black. Bad stuff. Rap music, violence and murder. It destroys the body. Sin brings forth death. But there's a penalty for sin. The immediate penalty is unhappiness, poverty, and curses. Then comes physical death, then comes eternal death. But you know, more important than eternal death is separation from God. You're eternally separated from Him. But there's a cure for sin. Yes. Thank you, Lord. It's a cross on a hill. Yes. With the Lamb of God hanging on it. He died that we might be saved. He paid the price. He shed his blood that we might be saved. Amen. He paid the full price on that cross for our sin. So we're faced with a choice. Will we accept Him? Will we accept His sacrifice? Or will we continue and face death? It's our choice. Choose wisely. David, if you would. Whoever's in here that sin, let's hold your hand up. Anybody here sin? <laughs> 